Welcome to a series that we call The End of Times, where we go through the book of Revelation verse by verse to try our best to understand what it is we can expect to happen in the end times, or the time Jesus refers to as the end of the age. Now, I just want to give a, kind of an announcement here. Every time we do an end of time series, and I think this is episode 46, we do a recap of where we've been through the book of Revelation up to this point, because we're going through it verse by verse, and I say where we are at this point. And I think some people are watching an episode here or there, and they think that that's, I'm saying that in the world, this is where we are. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying in the book, this is where we are. So in the book of Revelation, as we've read verse by verse, where we are in the book is John has been taken up into the throne room of God, where we're able to look around the throne room for a while. And he notices that God has a scroll in his hand with seven seals, and it's determined that only Jesus is worthy to open that scroll, because it is the, what's written in that scroll is the divine appointment of the coming of his kingdom on earth, as it is in heaven. And it's been sealed. And as those seven seals are broken, what we see is a lot of events take place that are done by man. It's done by the evil hearts of men. Those all seven seals until you get to the very last one. And now God is always in control and his horsemen are kind of allowing these things to take place on the earth. But once that scroll is actually opened and the seventh seal is broken, then the wrath of God is unleashed on the earth. So everything up until that point had been caused by man. Once that scroll is opened, then we get the prelude to the trumpets and there's seven trumpets. When the first trumpet blast, hail and fire fell down to a third of the earth and that third is Babylon. And later on when we, in Revelation, when we get to the section on Babylon, we'll kind of give a description of what the third of the earth is, but hail and fire rain down on it. And then the uh, um, Bible says something like a burning mountain. We can only assume it's a large meteor strikes off the shore of Babylon, destroying a third of it. <clears throat> and then Wormwood, who is an angel, comes down and poisons the hearts of men in that third. And then the sun is dark, and probably because of all the dust and debris that has flown up into the atmosphere from the meteor, and then we get to that fifth trumpet. So everything up until the first four trumpets have been the destruction of Babylon. That fifth trumpet, then we see that an eagle in heaven is flying around saying, whoa, 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 three times to the inhabitants of the earth for the next three trumpets. And that's where we are. So we're, the fifth trumpet is blasted. And last time we talked about what took place here that an angel came down with the key to the bottomless pit, and then we went into, well, what is that bottomless pit? And now we're about to get into what happens when that is opened. So we're going to pick it up in Revelation 9, verse 2. And he opened the bottomless pit, and smoke arose out of the pit like the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened because of the smoke of the pit. Now I'm going to pause there real quick. We read this verse last time, but... Uh, there's so many prophecies about the earth being darkened. And what we saw with the uh, fourth trumpet was that a third of the earth was darkened. Now with this fifth trumpet, the entire earth is being darkened. And, and kind of stay with that. That's very important because we're going to come back in this episode to a timeline and talk about when all this is happening and how long does it last. We'll pick it up in three. Then out of the smoke, locusts came upon the earth, and to them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. They were commanded not to harm the grass of the earth or any green thing or any tree, but only those men who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. And of course, we talked about what that seal meant back in chapter 7. And they were not given authority to kill them, but to torment them for five months. And their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it strikes a man. In those days, men will seek death and will not find it. They will desire to die and death will flee from them. And the shape of the locusts was like horses prepared for battle. And on their heads were crowns of something like gold and their faces were like the faces of men. They had hair like women's hair and their teeth were like lion's teeth. And they had breastplates like the breastplates of iron. 
and the sound of their wings was like the sound of chariots and many horses running into battle. And they had tails like scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. And they had as king over them the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, but in Greek he has the name Apollyon. One woe is past, behold, still more woes are coming after these things. There is so much going on in these verses here. And I wanted to read that entire section to kind of go over what's taking place here. Now, it says that ultimately what you're saying is, is the bottomless pit has been opened and smoke just starts ripping out. So much smoke that it blocks the sun from the entire planet. And then out of the smoke comes these locusts, which are probably a lot like a wasp, given the ability to sting. And then there's a description of them, and they clearly have a king over them, and they don't harm any grass or leaves. They're straight up after men, but only men that do not bear the mark of God or the seal of God on their foreheads, which is a spiritual seal. It's something that uh, regular men won't be able to see, as we talked about back in chapter 7. So let's I want to talk about this timeline for a second, then we're going to get into, because Joel also saw this taking place, and we're going to read his description of this, and then we'll come back to it to see exactly what is happening with these locusts tormenting men for five months, and apparently stinging them so bad they want to die. So let's, let's take another look at our timeline. Okay, well the darkness comes according to Daniel 8, 1,150 days after the abomination of desolation. So we know that this is happening, so that the darkness is taking place 1150 days after the abomination. So we're, that's when this fourth and fifth trumpet are being blasted right about then. Now it says it, he torments them for five, that they torment men for five months. Now when we look at the Hebrew calendar, which is what John would have used, it, it's in lunar months, which is 29.5 days a month exactly. So we're looking at tormenting for 147.5 days, 147 and a half days roughly, is when they will be tormenting them. So if we look at the darkness, according to Daniel 12, for 1,290 1, days after abomination, the tribulation ends. So from darkness to the end of tribulation, you're looking at 140 days. So there's about a week either prior to the darkness or after the darkness that these locusts slash wasps slash spiritual warriors are coming out of this smoke and then that ends the tribulation. So for the entire time in the darkness, and then of course you have 185 days from the darkness before Christ returns, according to, again, Daniel 12, 1,335 days. So once the darkness hits, you have 140 days before tribulation ends. During that entire time, this is what's happening. This is what God is unleashing, because up until this point, man is waging war against the Christians and killing them and causing all sorts of terrible things to take place on the earth. Hunger, famine, uh, disease, war is all taking place, but it's all caused by man. And then once this, these seals start breaking, then we see Babylon destroyed. Then all of a sudden then there's this darkness on the land and now these um, terrible locusts slash scorpions are coming out that are clearly led by spiritual things. So um, once that darkness hits, again, you got 140 days till tribulation ends, and for 147 and a half days, they're getting, these things are just ripping people apart. Now, I, I want to jump into Joel, because Joel also saw this take place, and he gives a totally different description um, well, similar, but very different. It gives a little more detail on what's happening here. So if we jump to Joel 2, we're going to read 1 through 11, and then we're going to break it down, because a lot of people interpret this wrong, and, and, it, and they do it because they read the English translation, but if you actually read the Hebrew translation, you'd see something very different. So we're going to read it, and then I'll break it down for you. Um, but this is the same event that we're seeing with that fifth trumpet. Uh, Joel 2 verse 1, Blow the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. 
Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming, for it is at hand. A day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, like the morning clouds spread over the mountains. The people come, great and strong, the like of whom has never been, nor will ever be, any such after them, even for many successive generations. So, people are coming according to this verse. But let's see what that word actually means, because it's not people that Joel's talking about. And even if you continue to read Joel and you didn't read the Hebrew version, there's no way you can interpret that as actual people. The word that, that they use here is, it says, a, a, a people came great and strong. But it's Rob, a great, Weasem, and strong, Shyam, troops appear. So what it really should say is Rab, Weasem, Shyam, a great and strong troops appear. Not people, troops. But my King, uh, New King James Version interprets it as people, but it's troops <clears throat> is the actual Hebrew word. All right, we'll pick up in three. A fire devours before them, and behind them a flame burns. The land is like the Garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Surely nothing shall escape them. Their appearance is like the appearance of horses, and like swift steeds so they run. With a noise like chariots over mountains they leap, like the noise of flaming fire that devours the stubble. Like a strong people set in battle array. Now let's again go back to that word people. Now in 2.5 it says like a strong people, but what it really says is like a mighty army is what the King James Version says, but it's kiam, it's like a mighty army. So ultimately what they're saying is, if you go back to 2, troops come great and strong like a mighty army set in battle array. And let's pick it up in 6. Before them the people writhe in pain, all faces are drained of color. They run like mighty men, they climb the wall like men of war, everyone marches in formation, and they do not break ranks. They do not push one another. Everyone marches in his own column, and when they lunge between their weapons, they are not cut down. They run to and fro in the city, they run on the wall, they climb into the houses, they enter at the windows like a thief. The earth quakes before them, the heaven trembles. The sun and moon grow dark, and the stars diminish their brightness. The Lord gives voice before his army, for his camp is very great. For strong is the one who executes his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. Who can endure it? So, reading that section in Joel, and I recommend everybody go back and read. It's Joel 2, verse 1 through 11. But now knowing that, Knowing what you know in Joel, now let's go back to Revelation and take another look at this. Because the other thing that I want to point out in Joel is it says, great and strong is the one who takes his direction. So God has put somebody in charge, and, and even Joel recognized this is this, whoever this is, is great and strong. And now let's read this again. 9 verse 2, And he opened the bottomless pit, and smoke rose out of the pit like the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened because of the smoke of the pit. Then out of the smoke locusts came upon the earth, and to them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. They were commanded not to harm the grass of the earth, or any green thing, or any tree, but only those men who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. And they were not given authority to kill them, but to torment them, for five months, and their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it strikes a man. Now, let's kind of jump back to Joel real quick now that we know that. If you look at Joel 2, um, there's something that's peculiar that it says, um, if you look at 2 verse 6, it says, Before them the people writhe in pain. All their faces are drained of color. You know, so this is not working out well for these men that are getting whooped up by whatever these things are. Now we're back. I apologize. We're in Revelation 9 verse 6. In those days men will seek death and will not find it. They will desire to die and death will flee from them. And the shape of the locusts was like horses prepared for battle, just like Joel said. And on their heads were crowns of something like gold and their faces were like faces of men. They had hair like women's hair and their teeth were like lion's teeth. 
and they had breastplates like the breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings were like the sounds of chariots with many horses running into battle, just like Joel said. They had tails like scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men for five months. So this is, once it becomes dark, this is what happens. Apparently they come in columns, they just roll in across the landscape in columns, just destroying everything in their path. Um, you know, these are clearly angelic, I don't want to say they're angels, but they're definitely heavenly beings that have come out of the pit, so they could be demonic things, but they're being directed by a spiritual warrior, a strong spiritual warrior, according to Joel. And then if we look then at Revelation 9, verse 11, it says, And they had a king over them, the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew is Abaddon, but in Greek he has the name Apollyon. So this is really not turning out good for anybody that does not have that seal on their forehead. So, you know, even if we look at the rapture at this point, the rapture has not taken place. So if you're a Christian on this earth, you've been, you've been essentially persecuted uh, by the beast, by the Antichrist, to the point of many deaths, many have been slain. But you've been able to prophesy, turn, you know, when we get to what the witnesses can do, it's really, there's some amazing power in that. And then all of a sudden it, you're watching Babylon get destroyed, a third of the earth gets destroyed, and then smoke just starts ripping out of whatever this bottomless pit is on the earth. And it darkens the entire planet, and then something like a locust slash horse slash scorpion slash armor plated man looking thing is now coming across the landscape in columns, completely devouring and stinging anybody that does not have the seal of God on their forehead. And apparently they, they want to die. It hurts so bad that they wish for death. And according to Joel, it just there's no it just takes the color out of their face and they're just in writhing pain. And this goes on for 147 and a half days. Um, and this is really, and again, I kind of want to go back to these trumpets are good news for Christians. You know, this sounds awful. This isn't going to happen to me. I definitely intend on being there when this event takes place, but I'm going to watch these things pass right by me because I definitely will be sealed by God, as will you will be if you're a Christian. And that's why it's really important that we see ourselves there, because there's the wrath of God is not unleashed on Christians. And a lot of times people interpret that as being, well, that means we get raptured up before this happens. No, that's not what that means. It definitely says that Christians are being persecuted and killed and it definitely says nothing about a rapture of the church, but then later on, right before the end of the tribulation, then that's when uh, the rapture occurs. And when we get to that place, we will then bring that up. But that's where we're at now. We're going to stay on this section for one more episode. Next time, we're going to talk about uh, who is Abaddon, clearly a great spiritual leader who is driving this entire assault on the men of the earth who are not of God. Um, but Christians, you're, you have nothing to worry about. This is good news. Again, up until this point, they're getting killed by the Antichrist. So these trumpets are like the cavalry has shown up. It's definitely God's wrath on the ungodly and the unrighteous of the earth. And there's plenty of them. So again, this is great news for Christians. I hope these videos are helping. Um, love to hear your thoughts on what these locusts are. Uh, you know, I love kind of just seeing what it is people have to say about these things. I, I really appreciate all your feedback you're giving. And again, so what you're going to expect is smoke, wind, fist, trumpet, blast, smoke, you know, angel's going to come down. He's going to unlock the bottomless pit. Smoke's going to come ripping out. It's going to darken the earth. This is happening 1,150 days after the abomination. Then this is going to go on for 147 and a half days. And then these locusts slash horses slash scorpions slash armor plated men with hair like women are going to then like, a, like in columns just rip across the entire landscape of the earth stinging anybody who does not have that seal on their forehead of God. So... 
Um, and so next time we're going to get, get uh, take a closer look at back at Joel on who is this great leader because even Joel mentioned him that great is the one who follows his direction. You know this is you know this is seriously a, a bad mamma jamma we're talking about here, and we'll get to know who is Abaddon or in Greek Apollyon. Love to hear your thoughts on it. Put it in the comments below. If you like this video, click like and subscribe. If you feel called to support our channel through Patreon, that link is also below. But the most important part of this channel is we take prayer requests. I'll never hesitate to send that in. Thank you for watching this episode of God, Family, and Guns. And as always, love God, love your family, and love guns.